Okay, so in this video, we're going to see how to spawn a prefab, which could be an enemy, a collectible, or anything. And uh, we're obviously going to do that by coding a little bit. Um, and I've already done that. I've already prepared the script to do that. So I have the script here, spawner. I'm going to double click. Uh, that's going to open my script here. And um, to make it work, as usual in Unity, you need the script to be attached to a game object. So I'm going to create the game object now. I'm going to create an empty one and call it spawner. And it doesn't really matter where this object will be because I make this show that um, the position of the spawning happens, um, sorry, is taken from another point. So I can leave it anywhere I want. Um, and then I want to add the spawner, spawner script. So I do this. Um, you can also drag and drop the scripts like this, but um, there's different ways. So spawner script, going back to the script itself, as you can see, I declared a couple of uh, public variables. Uh, one is a transform and I called it spawn point. And this is going to define where the object is spawned. And then the other one is a game object reference. And this is called prefab to spawn. And this is going to be the object that we're spawning. Declaring them as uh, public, sorry, make, makes it so that they appear in the inspector. So you will see here spawn point and prefab to spawn, exactly the two variables that I've declared here. Um, and now we can connect them. So if I create a new object and I call it spawn point, I can then drag this one to the spawn point and Unity, oops, I, uh, named it spawny. Uh, Unity is going to uh, take from that object the transform component. So that's, that's going to be our spawn point. And it's here now, but we can say, let's just put it on the ground. And let's just say that it's here. So this is where the object is going to spawn. And then for the prefab to spawn, which is a, is a game object reference, we can find something to spawn. Let's say that we want to go to... Um, this folder here, we want to spawn this character. So we select the script, we have the reference here, and we drag the character to the reference. So that's it's going to be spawned in this location here on the ground. Back to the script. So let's disregard this for now. Uh, if you want to spawn an object just once, you can do that from the start function. So the start function is called at the beginning, uh, before the first frame update is going to be called only once. And as you can see here, we're doing, uh, we're basically creating a new reference. No, it's not really needed, but um, you know, it's not, never bad. Uh, and then we call the instantiate function, which is going to instantiate a game object. And the instantiate function has different parameters. The first one of them is going to be what to spawn. And in this case, it's a direct reference to the public reference that I created here. So this is going to be the object that gets spawned. The second one is the position in which we want to spawn that object. And this position comes from the other reference, the transform. And the third one is going to be the rotation that the object has. And by saying quaternion.identity, I make sure that the rotation is basically zero. So this line creates a new object, spawns a new object, and then saves the reference here. Again, we're not doing much with the reference, but it's um, it's not a bad thing to, to have it. So again, start is going to be called at the beginning. So if I go back to the scene and I press play, the object gets spawned because um, start gets called on the spawner. Uh, the spawner finds the prefab to spawn, generates it, and then he puts it here where the spawn point is. In fact, if I select the spawn point, is exactly where the object got spawned. And you see now that the the prefab got generated, it's here, right? So this is the new object that was created that is, as a result of my uh, scripting. In fact, if I press play, sorry, if I press the play button to stop, the object also disappears because everything we do at runtime gets undone when uh, you exit play mode. Just uh, for your reference, let's say that we want to spawn objects like uh, at a specific point in time. So I will now comment this line 
to stop it from being executed. And I will uncomment these lines here, which are I, prepa I prepared before, and I want to use them to spawn objects in time. So what I'm doing here is I'm basically um, using the update function instead. And the update function is called once per frame. So it's going to be run like all the time, basically. Uh, so I need a way to say, I want to spawn my objects, not all the time, not every frame, but like every certain amount of seconds. And I need to create a couple of extra variables. So the first one is called time to spawn. And it's basically the interval. I could have called it interval. Uh, and it's uh, set to five seconds right now. So it, the object is going to be spawned every five seconds. And the other one is a reference to when was the last object spawned. Um, and right now I have it on zero. So it means like we are taking zero as a beginning of time, if you want. Uh, and then we're going to spawn an object every five seconds. So in the update, which runs every frame, I am checking what time is it somehow. And actually here I made a mistake. This should be time. So I said, um, if the current time is above last spawn time, which is, you know, last time the object was spawned, plus the interval, uh, then we want to create a new object. So if this happens, if this is verified, so if it's time to spawn a new object, we generate it. And as you can see, this line is exactly the same as this one. It's doing exactly the same, instantiate, create a new object. Which one? This one. Where? Here. Which rotation? This one. Same, exact same operation. Once we have spawned the object, because we want to mark the time that we spawned it, we store that time. So we take the time, the current time, and we store it in time to spawn. Uh, sorry, again, this is a mistake. It should be last spawn time. Um, so we store the time in last spawn time. And the point is that next time we check last spawn time, this is going to be, for example, 5 at the beginning. And then next time it's going to be 10. It's going to be, you know, 15 and so forth. So by setting this to 5, every 5 seconds we enter this if statement and we set this time and we update this time. So it's going to be 5, 10, 15, 20 and so forth. If you go back to the scene, if I press play now, you're going to see that we spawn an object every five seconds. There we go. This is the first one, which is spawned at five. And then at 10 seconds, we get another one and so forth. Of course, if, um, as you can see, if they don't move, they're going to be spawned on the same spot. But the script is working. Again, if I press play uh, and I exit play mode, all the clones that were spawned at runtime will be uh, removed. If you want to uh, spawn objects like with a certain uh, randomization in position, we can do that. Uh, it's quite easy, actually. So let's do it right now uh, live. I will basically add two variables. Um, or let's add one variable. Let's add. Let's make it very simple. So I'll add one variable, uh, vector three, and the vector three is gonna be our uh, random factor. Let's call it. I declared it as public, which means that if I go in here and I select the spawner script once Unity has finished uh, compiling, we will see the new variable here, and this is gonna be a random amount on the three axes that I can apply to this uh, initial position of the spawn point. And because the object is going to be on the ground, this random amount will be only X and Z, right? The two ground axes. So let's say that I put it on five and five. Back to the script. How do we use this random amount now, or this random factor? Um, let's go where we spawn the object, which is here. And here we have, as you can see, the position. So let's say that we want to change this position randomly according to that random factor. So we need to basically create an extra step. We need to declare a new vector three where we're going to do some calculations. Let's call it the new object position. 
And this is going to be a new vector 3. Or let's call it let's call it offset, right? Let's call it offset. Um, this is going to be a new vector tree that we generate ourselves randomly, going basically from this random factor. So we will call this um, sorry, we will call them random dot random dot range function. Random.range is a function that takes two numbers and spits out a random number between them. So we will take basically, for example, random factor or minus random factor dot x and random factor dot x. So this, this is going to take the number that we, the vector 3, is going to take its x component, which is here is 5 and it's going to use it to generate this random number so it's going to generate a random number between minus 5 and plus 5 any any number between those two this is going to be the x of this new vector so we just need to do i'm going to copy and i'm going to paste here and this is going to be 0 and this is going to be z so now we take the z which is this one which is also 5, but it could be, you know, I could put it on 4 just to make a difference. Y is 0 because we're not really going to use the Y because we don't want the object to spawn vertically. Uh, but if we wanted, we could like literally do this also for the, the Y. Let's do it just for the sake of uh, being precise. Uh, and now we have a, a, an offset vector 3, which is generated randomly from our three values. So then I take this offset and I add it, literally add it to the spawn position. So the position of the new object is not going to be exactly the position of the spawning point, but it's going to be that plus an offset, which is going to be randomized starting from these three values. So it's going to be between minus 5 and 5 on the x, between 0 and 0 on the y, so it's going to be 0, and between minus 4 and 4 on the z. So now that we've done that, let's reduce the uh, spawning interval a little bit so we see things faster. I save the script, I go back to Unity and I press play. And we should see objects spawning randomized. So as you can see now, the characters are being spawned randomly and of course sometimes they might appear on top of each other. Uh, in an area that's basically starting from the spawn point and being four, five units to this side, five units to this side, right? Because the orientation of the world is like this. So five to the right, five to the left, and four to the front and four to the back, but always zero on the Y. So that's why you see that they're all on the ground. And this concludes our example of how to generate objects randomly in space um, with the use of scripting.